All right, guys, today we're going to talk about a few American knife manufacturing brands that are not Benchmade that are what I would consider to be like the top three. So let's jump right into it with number one. And the number one for me is going to be Emerson. Now, Emerson has a bit of a controversial past, but I think nowadays, as most people can say, um, Emerson knives are perfectly fine, good users, and, and above all, they're really built with hard use, practical use in mind. I think the biggest thing for me that really attracts me to Emerson is that they're kind of a far cry from what we see so much in the modern knife industry with blades that are purely appealing to the aesthetics, to the design, and to be really nice knives to look at and not the best to use. But ultimately, Emerson has unchanged materials, still G10, titanium, and the 154 CM blade steel. And honestly, these are just good, hard using, hard working blades. And they come in a wide variety of different blade shapes from things like tantos to recurves to even just simple drop point blades. And you can get them in many different flavors. I personally really like my uh, Minicom here or Mini Commander, and I like the Commander family of knives the most from them, but I also have a Horseman, which is the Mini CQC8, and that's an awesome blade, but the CQC7 is another fantastic offering. The A100, they're all pretty darn fantastic. So whether you're going from a more dressed up knife uh, or a more utilitarian blade, I think Emerson has a really good lineup of knives that, once again, are like no free Frills. They're not really going to be super aesthetically pleasing and they're not using any crazy like handle materials or super premium blade materials, but they're knives that just work. All right, next one up and similar in mindset to our previous one, Emerson, is going to be zero tolerance. Now, I threw zero tolerance on this list for a few reasons. And the first one for me, and I think the best point to ZT, is that undoubtedly similar to their um, family brand, Kershaw, like their lower quality brand, um, ZT works with a ton of manufacturers or um, companies that make knives such as Hinderer, Strider, uh, actually I don't know if they were Strider, in fairness, but uh, Emerson, Hinderer, and many, many other designers and knife manufacturing companies to bring you a lot of different designs. And that's probably my favorite part about ZT is you can get a wide variety of different blades from them from different manufacturers that offer a lot of the value of their kind of home manufacturer. So like this ZT0562 is ultimately a Hinderer XM18 clone. And it offers honestly a lot of the design and ergonomic features of that knife. But once again, there's many different other makers, Ken Onion, um, even Strider to an extent with some of Ken Onion's earlier ZTs are kind of included in this. But ZT, uh, you know, just has dabbled in so many different designs but one thing that i do really like about them at the core they use really solid materials whether that's titanium uh, carbon fiber and honestly solid blade steels they've used s35 vn for years this one of course is cpm 20 cv but they use really high-end materials and what i love about it so much is they bring these blades in at a really good price point. Uh, their MSRP, I will say, is a little high, but oftentimes the street prices, like this 0562, I got as a user in fairness, but I got it for about 200 bucks. And really, realistically, for what you're getting here, it's honestly not that bad. I mean, a full carbon fiber scale, full titanium scale, and CPM 20 CV in a frame lock flipper for 200 bucks is pretty hard to beat, especially considering it's a manu uh, a made in the USA manufacturer. So overall, uh, ZT brings a ton of value. And granted, I will say probably the biggest disadvantage is the fact that some of their models can be a little bit more expensive, like the 0, 0630, 640 uh, are discontinued and they are amazing knives. I would actually love to add one to my list because it is essentially a Emerson um, CQC7, but a little bit higher quality. 
but it, it is a hard knife and usually pretty expensive to get. But anyways, uh, the, the newer ZTs and even the older ZTs are awesome for the right price. But overall, this company, I think a lot of people throw them under the bus and I don't really know why that is because honestly, like there's no blade play. These things are really solidly made out of great materials as well. And their heat treat is almost always on point. Like people, especially Benchmade loyalists, love to just throw um, ZT literally in the gutter. But honestly, these blades, like I would seriously take a ZT over Benchmade any day of the week. Like it's not even a competition. All right, so moving into the third place, because this is the top three brands, I decided to split it between two because initially I was going to say um, Spyderco because of their golden uh, Colorado line of knives, primarily their para and military lineup, but they do make a lot of knives overseas in China, Taiwan, and so on. So I didn't want to fully put them in this because this is a USA brand. So I thought I would split this between um, Spyderco and Microtech, who also makes knives in China. So largely, I would say Microtech is a USA brand, and largely, I would say that um, Spyderco, at least as far as I'm concerned with things like the Manix, the Shaman, the Para family um, are largely USA made knives, but both of these companies do have um, imported knives from China. So it's important to note that. But anyways, I would say Microtech is on this list and this is specifically, I just pulled out my old school Tri-Grip um, Ultratech, but they do make more practical EDC blades. Even the uh, single edged Ultratech is a solid EDC blade if you can rock an auto. But uh, if you can't, their new uh, stitch with the Ramlock is a really solid contender. Um, they do make some good knives, of course. The SOCOM uh, Elite line of knives is really solid as well for folders. But uh, also, like I said, Spyderco is really solid with their Golden Colorado family of knives, the Paras, the Manix, the Shaman, um, the list goes on. But both of these companies do a fantastic job. Once again, Spyderco is very well known for their amazing heat treat. They come in a plethora of different steels, especially their Golden Colorado lineup come in so many good steels. It's hard to choose from. Uh, this one is in Rex 45 and it's solid. And once again, too, it's also worth noting that uh, usually Microtech's heat treat is pretty on point and they come in not as many steels as Spyderco, but a good amount of steels. This one in particular is LMAX, but I have another Ultratech in M390 and uh, they make other uh, knives and other blade steels as well. So they're both really good, solid offerings. Now, both of these guys are going to be a little bit more pricey, especially Microtech has a bit of a Microtech tax stamp to it, so to speak, where if you want a Microtech, you're going to have to spend a little bit more for that brand name, but they're both pretty good. And once again, I think realistically, if you do get into the right Microtech, whether that's like a Stitch, um, a SOCOM Elite, or something like an Ultratech, you won't be disappointed as a whole. Um, and same can be said about Spyderco. Now Spyderco, it is worth noting that they do love their full flat grinds and their super, super fine tips. So if you have more of an industrious application in mind, I would recommend the previous two brands of Emerson or Zero Tolerance because usually these guys are going to be a little bit harder wearing or even Microtech. I mean, their uh, SOCOM elites are going to be perfectly fine. So. Anyways, guys, that is my top three brands for EDC that are not a Benchmade because I really don't think that Benchmade deserves as much airtime as they get. And while Benchmade does offer some, it does have some solid offerings, these guys, in my opinion, all of these brands, nine times out of 10, beat them. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless. And I'm